Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, football season is right around the corner, which means fantasy football is also making its return. Today, I'm bringing you guys my top 20 fantasy football player rankings for the 2021-22 NFL season. But before we get into that, you're probably wondering, why should we trust this dude? You know, what sort of credibility does he have? Well, let me present to you my fantasy football resume. All right, enjoy. As the back-to-back -back champion of the most competitive and active league in the world, Hefe was able to display brilliance in drafting, waiver wire pickups, and lineup changes. All of the industry giants are shaking as we speak. Why am I talking like this? But enough of the chitter chatter, Google Gaga. Let's get into the top 20, all right? At number 20, I have my boy, George Kittle, all right? The people's tight end. Now, in my opinion, you know, George Kittle is the best tight end in the league. And that should be your opinion too, because if it's not, then I'm sorry, you do not know football, click off the video. I don't want you here. But the reason I don't actually have George Kittle higher up on this list is pretty simple. Uh, my Niners run a very run heavy offense. We literally just drafted another running back and we picked up Wayne Gallman in the offseason. Season, which means we're gonna run the ball even more. I don't even know who our quarterback is gonna be halfway through the season. Like, it should be Jimmy Garoppolo, but then he also just loves getting hurt, so it could be Trey Lance. But then with our injury luck, it's probably not gonna be Trey Lance either, so it'll probably be Nate Sudfeld or Josh Rosen. At the 19th spot, we got A.J. Brown. Now, A.J. Brown's a very interesting one. You know, I hopped in my math bag and I started crunching the numbers. On Yahoo, his ADP is 22. On NFL Fantasy, he's ranked number 10. And then on ESPN, he's ranked 23. For me, number 19 is a pretty fair ranking for A.J. Brown. I mean, you could definitely argue that Julio Jones is going to take away a lot of his targets. And obviously, the basis of their offense is Derrick Henry. But look, the guy had 1,000 yards and 11 touchdowns with no knees. He's like the dude on Quop. Remember the game Quop? That's A.J. Brown, all right? You could also argue that Julio and Derrick Henry actually help A.J. Brown. Because I think he's going to see a lot of single coverage this year, which, you know... It's pretty dangerous. Their whole offense is pretty dangerous, but AJ Brown at number 19, I feel like it's fair. At number 18, we have Justin Jefferson, all right? He's kind of similar to AJ Brown. They both have a monster running back in the backfield. They both have a very good receiver next to him, and they both have a white QB. So it's actually really hard for me to decide on whether or not I wanted to put Jefferson or Brown. But at the end of the day, Jefferson for me is the clear number one for the Vikings at the moment. Whereas AJ Brown is kind of, you know, it's kind of muddy. It's kind of like a 1A, 1B situation. And all the fantasy football websites are having this issue too, all right? ESPN has him at 24, Yahoo has him at 22, uh, NFL Fantasy has him at 17. So you could probably go either way, but I think I'd give Justin Jefferson the nod over AJ Brown, which is why I have him at number 18. Number 17, we have Austin Eckler. Now, Austin Eckler, he he's kind of an interesting player. He's not going to do it over the ground for you, all right? He's probably going to get around 10 to 15 carries a game. But what separates him, especially in PPR, is the fact that he can get at least 800 targets throughout the entire season. Which, as a running back, there's, I think, only a couple of guys who can do it. Maybe Kamara, CMC. Last year, I picked Austin Eckler, I think, with the 13th pick, all right? Because I saw this Instagram post right here, okay? Do you see this caption? This is exactly what you want to see with your fantasy football running back, all right? A guy who acknowledges your existence. But the reason I have him at 17 is, and look at this outfit, all right? That's atrocious. No, I'm just playing. The reason I have him at 17 is because they have a whole new coaching staff. They got a new head coach, Brandon Staley, and they got a new offensive coordinator Joe Lombardi so I don't know how that's gonna work with Justin Herbert obviously he had a great rookie year but you see guys like Baker Mayfield you know take a step down in their second year after NFL defenses figure him out same thing happened with Lamar Jackson too and I'm not saying that it's gonna happen with Justin Herbert I'm saying it's a possibility and that could trickle down and affect Austin Eckler too so that's why I have Austin Eckler at 17 but feel free to take him earlier you know I don't mind the pick at all he's gonna get a lot of targets it's great for PPR now number 16 I'm just gonna say it, it's gonna piss a lot of people off and honestly I don't care. I really don't. Because I don't understand how this player is so highly ranked, okay? We have Jonathan Taylor. Number six on NFL Fantasy. Number eight on ESPN. And number six on Yahoo. Why? Listen, he had a great ending to last year's season. From week 13 to week 17, the guy was on fire, all right? He dropped 37 fantasy points in week 17. But I don't know. I feel like a lot of people are overrating this second year running back theory. I don't even know where it started from. I, I don't understand why it's still a thing. Same thing with quarterbacks, too. They do the second year quarterback is just going to become Jesus Christ. Like, I don't understand it. I would not put a guy in my top 10 
maybe even top 15, if there's still questions about his workload. They re-signed Marlon Mack in the offseason. They still have Naeem Hines. For whatever reason, Frank Reich has this thing where it's like, if you make one mistake, you're not playing the rest of the game. Especially in PPR, I mean, Naeem Hines takes all the receptions and targets as the running back anyways. So I don't know, man. Jonathan Taylor, for me, is kind of a boomer bust this year. Number six, at the end of the day, is just way too high for me. But I'll still put him at number 16 because, you know, he does have superstar potential. Boom, boom, boom. Number 15, Calvin Ridley. I don't know. I don't know why I did this. Number 24 on Yahoo. Number 23 on NFL Fantasy. Number 19 on ESPN. So why the hell do I have him at 15? Well, for me, it's pretty simple. He finished as the number four receiver last year in fantasy football. He also missed an entire game during that span. I know a lot of people are gonna be worried that now Ridley's the guy, he's gonna see a lot of like the best corners, but y'all gotta realize, Ridley was seeing the best corners last year as well. Listen, Matt Ryan loves spamming this guy the ball, all right? It's like he doesn't know how to press any other button on the controller. He only looks for Ridley. And I think the Falcons offense will be interesting. I think their team's gonna be trash, but they drafted Kyle Pitts. You know, they picked up the Black McCaffrey. They're gonna be spraying the ball a lot, all right? And I think Calvin Ridley is gonna benefit off of that system, which is why he starts off the top 15 at number 15. I'm doing a lot of hand gestures in this video. Number 14, this one's a little awkward, you know, as a Niners fan, but I'm gonna put DK Metcalf here. You know, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna sing his praises for, you know, too long. I think he has an opportunity to become one of the best receivers in the NFL. And whether or not he takes that leap this year, I still think his floor is very solid. You know, there's questions here and there about their new OC. I think his name is Waldron, Walden, something like that, Waldo. He's number 20 on Yahoo and ESPN, number 24 on NFL Fantasy. I don't think he deserves to be number 24 all right this guy should be off the board within the top 15. this one for me is just a pure player progression kind of pick the offense didn't really change much besides they drafted like this Dwayne Eskridge dude who's like five foot seven I don't really see that affecting DK's targets uh and I think Russell Wilson would throw him the ball a lot more this year we're creeping up into the top 10 here number 13 we have Travis Kelsey 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 Kels? Apparently he actually said it's Kels, but people have just been calling him Kelsey. I don't know, man. I I'm just gonna call him Travis or Trav. I'm not gonna go on all day about him, all right? We all know about Kansas City's offensive system. They still have Mahomes. Kelsey is still his favorite target. They lost Sammy Watkins in the offseason, which means more targets for Travis. In my opinion, for fantasy football, he's gonna be the number one tight end. On Yahoo, his ADP is around 12.7. On NFL Fantasy, it's at around 9, and uh, on ESPN, it's at number 4. I did not see this coming! Who the hell made this list? They need to fire him right now. They need to hire me, okay? Why am I not working at ESPN right now? Listen, don't pick Travis Kelsey number 4 in your fantasy drafts, alright? To me, he's not worth a first-round pick. I, I never think a tight end is worth a first-round pick, but he's the clear number 1 at the tight end spot, which is why I have him at number 13, just outside of the first round. Now we're moving into the first round here. At number 12, we have DeAndre Hopkins. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I I I'm kinda shaky on Hopkins this year. The Cardinals let go of Kenyon Drake, but then they bought in James Conner. They also bought in AJ Green. They drafted Rondale Moore, which would possibly take targets away from D-Hop, but D-Hop is D-Hop, all right? He's one of the best, if not the best receiver in the NFL. Could he catch COVID and, you know, miss a couple games? He might. However, I still have him at number 12, all right? This guy is just too good to pass up on in the first round. He was the number four ranked receiver last year, and he had like five games with 11 or less fantasy points, and I don't think that's gonna happen again this year. So I'm still confident with DeAndre Hopkins. Number 12, I feel like, is a fair rank for him but let's move on to number 11 all right we have aaron jones but before we get into aaron jones can we just take a quick second to acknowledge the destruction of the green bay packers over the last couple of weeks we'd love to see it anyways aaron jones at number 11 what? The reason is because he has a good balance between carries and targets. Now, the targets might be lower in quality this year if Jordan Love starts, but there's still targets regardless. There's also concern about A.J. Dillon, but I've been hearing about A.J. Dillon for the last, like, two years, and I haven't seen him do much. I still trust Aaron Jones here. They lost Corey Lindsley, but Bakhtiari's back healthy, so I think their O-line's gonna be fine. The reason I have him above Hopkins is purely because he's a running back, and running backs are just naturally more valuable than wide receivers just because there's not enough depth. The only real concern I have for Aaron Jones Jones is Jordan Love. I feel like teams might force Jordan Love to throw, uh, which means they'll stack the box. I could also see Aaron Jones slipping because of Jordan Love, but he's still a great player regardless, all right? So number 11 is Aaron Jones. So there you guys go. That is part one of my top 20 players for the 2021 NFL fantasy season. Let's see if you can hit 70 likes on this video for part two, all right? The top 10, the holy grail. Hopefully this video helped you guys, man. Let me know in the comments down below what you would change on this list. Also hit the subscribe button. I don't know.
haven't asked you guys to hit the subscribe button like forever it feels like but hit the subscribe button bro what are you doing